What is up guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS3 tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how to run backwards compatible games on our jailbroken PS3. So that's PS1 games, PS2 games and PSP games on your jailbroken PS3. You do not need one of the old PS3 models that's officially backwards compatible, the ones that can actually run PS2 disc games. That's not required, you can run uh, PS1, PS2 and PSP games on any PS3 as long as it's running custom firmware, preferably uh, 4.84 Rebug Rex which we installed in episode 1. The playlist link to the previous episodes is in the description so you can get caught up uh, with the series so far. So on the PS3s that are not officially backwards compatible you can't of course just run a PS2 disc in the PS3. Uh, so what we can do is we can install the game in ISO form directly to the hard drive and then run the game off the hard drive. So that is how we will um, get those games running on our jailbroken PS3. So first of all you need to make sure you have either webman or multiman installed uh, which was covered in episode 2 uh, because we want access to our FTP server so we can remotely transfer files between our computer and our PS3. Um, so if you head into system settings and check your system information to make sure you have a valid IP address, which I do there, 192.168.137.116. So that's good. So we can remotely connect to our PS3 via FTP. So on the computer, you're going to run an FTP client like FileZilla or WinSCP. Enter the IP address of your PS3 in the host box and put in 21 as the port number and connect. And that will connect you to your PS3's uh, file system. Uh, remotely and then we're going to head into dev underscore hdd0 to access all the files that are on our hard drive so i've got a bunch of backwards compatible games here i've got Yu-Gi-Oh! forbidden memories which is a ps1 game crash of the titans which is a psp game and of course grand theft auto san andreas which is a ps2 game so all we have to do is install these to the corresponding folders on the hard drive. So PS2 games go into the PS2 ISO folder, just like PS3 games go in the PS3 ISO folder. So make sure the game is in ISO format, so it ends in .iso. Um, if it's a zip file or a 7-zip file or you know a WinRAR file, then extract the ISO from the zip file. And then you can transfer the ISO file to the PS2 ISO folder. And that will go ahead and copy the game uh, over. There you go. It starts transferring the file to that folder on the hard drive. Okay, and once it's done copying, you can head into the PS2 ISO folder. And as you can see, the game has transferred over. So next, we'll do Crash of the Titans. And as you can see, it's a .7-zip file. So we're going to have to extract the ISO file from uh, the zip file. So we'll just extract that over to our desktop here. Okay, so there we go. We now have the ISO file on there. And that of course goes into the PSP ISO folder. So if you go into the PSP ISO folder and copy your PSP ISOs into that folder. All right, and there we go. That's our PSP game copied. So finally our PS1 game, which is Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. So this does not come as an ISO file. The PS1 games come in a .bin file and a .cue file. Now, if you were just running this game in like a, a PC emulator, you typically only need the bin file, but for the PS3, it requires both files. It requires the bin file and the CUE file. So we're going to extract that and they go into the PSX ISO folder. So just copy those two files, the bin file and the CUE file into the PSX ISO folder. Okay, so now that we have everything copied over, we'll head back over to the PS3 here and we'll go to uh, game and we'll go to webman games. Now, if your games are not showing up in here, then you can just, you know, launch something like multi-man and then back out or do a soft reboot by uh, launching webman mod again. And that will just do a soft reboot back to the XMB and then your games list should appear. Okay, so after you've rebooted, if we head to webman games, We've got our game showing up here. So there's uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. We've got Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories and Crash of the Titans. So if I try and launch, say, Grand Theft Auto here, we should see that that will work. So it gets uh, mounted. And I don't believe it automatically loads the game like it does with PS3 games. You have to manually launch it. And I don't think it will launch from app underscore home PS3 game either. Yeah, that doesn't work. So you have to launch it from here, PlayStation 2 format disc. So select that and uh, then it will ask you to create a memory card. So just say yes, uh, click OK. Yeah, so we go to the memory card utility, create a new memory card, select a PS2 memory card and then just click OK. And that will create our memory card. 
Um, so yeah, there you go. It creates our memory card and now we can launch the game. Okay, so here we are loaded up into the game here and as you can see it is running, even though this PS3 is not officially backwards compatible. But the game is running here. So that is a PS2 game. So let's go ahead and quit and try uh, the PS1 game next. Okay, so back to the XMB here. I have to power the controller back up again because it keeps switching itself off every time you uh, launch a PS2 game or leave a PS2 game. It turns the controller off. So now we'll head to PlayStation and run Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories, our PS1 game. Okay, so before you run the game, you'll have to create a PlayStation 1 memory card. You'll have to go into the memory card utility and create a PlayStation 1 memory card. And then you'll have to assign it. So the PS2 memory card's assigned to slot 1 right now. So you have to press triangle on the PlayStation 1 memory card and then assign that to slot 1 instead. And then you'll be able to save your PS1 games. So now we can just run our PS1 game. Okay, so there you go. As you can see, we've got our PS1 game running here. No problem. So there you go. That is a PlayStation 1 game. So moving on to our PSP game. So that's PS1 and PS2 games. And as you can see, they run absolutely fine. But PSP games is a little different. If you try and run a PSP game here, you can see that it loads or it looks like it's been mounted, but there it's not mounted at all so you can't run the game. If I try and go into webman setup and launch it from the web version, go to PS3 webman games here and then select Crash of the Titans and it just gives me an error. It's not able to mount the game. So yeah that's a problem and if we go into multi-man, so in multi-man here you go to the retro section and refresh and that uh, refreshes all the games so you can mount your games from here as well like uh, your ps1 and ps2 games can be mounted from here but if we try crash of the titans here then you just just get this error message about psp launcher application not being installed quit to xmb and install the latest version of psp launcher and then yeah uh, you get another error after that so that is what we need. In order to run PSP games, we need something called PSP Launcher. So to get PSP Launcher here, if we head back over to the computer, uh, you want to download it from Brewology. I'll put the link in the description. Just download the latest version, the PSP Launcher fixed version. Top download link, just download that. And as you can see, I already have it here downloaded. So we're gonna reconnect to our PS3 on FTP. And there we go, that's, re that's reconnected us. So back into the same folder here, devhdd0. Um, we're going to go into the packages directory. And we're going to copy the PSP launcher into that directory. So on the PS3, we go to package manager, install package files, PS3 system storage, and select PSP launcher fixed. And we'll go ahead and install that. Okay, install completed. So now we have PSP launcher. Okay, so if you run PSP launcher, You'll notice that nothing happens because it's just used to launch the game once it's mounted. So what we'll do is we'll go into Webman Games and select our PlayStation Portable game again, Crash of the Titans. And there you go, that gets loaded. So now that that's been loaded, although it doesn't show up here, like you can just launch it, what we do now that the game is mounted essentially is we just run PSP Launcher and that will launch the mounted game. Okay, and as you can see here, we've got the game running. It's running absolutely fine. So yeah, that's it basically. That's how you install PSP games as well as PS1 and PS2 games on your jailbroken PS3. A few extra things to mention though, if you're having trouble running any of these games and they're not just running perfectly fine like they are for me, again, make sure you have Rebug Rex custom firmware installed version 4.84, which is the firmware we installed in episode one. And if you head into Package Manager, Install Package Files, PS3 System Storage, you should have Rebug Toolbox in here, which comes as part of um, the Rebug Rex custom firmware. So if you install that and run it, it allows you to configure some of the system settings, including the PlayStation 2 emulation. So once you're in Rebug Toolbox, it looks a little bit like um, Multiman essentially, but in Rebug Toolbox, if you head into the selector, you can change and customize some of the modes in here. So everything that's in here right now is just set by default and you know it should be the same so you shouldn't have any issues but you never know maybe if you're on a newer version um, then some of these settings might be different but 
as you can see, toggle PS2 emulator, make sure that's set to Cobra, which it should be by default again, but in case it's not, then just make sure it is. Um, if it's not working, you can try original and try it with original, see if it works on original. If it doesn't work on original, go back to Cobra. But uh, yeah, you can customize the settings here. Make sure Cobra mode is enabled as well. Um, but you can customize these settings to try and get the emulator to work a bit better. But uh, yeah, generally though, it should be fine if you just leave these settings as they are by default. And I'm sure some of you will be wondering if you can install the games to an external hard drive. Technically you can, but there are some problems with it, so I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend with backwards compatible games, you just install them to the internal hard drive as we've done here. Um, because if your external hard drive is formatted in NTFS format, then you can only run PlayStation 1 games off it. PS2 games and PSP games will not be detected. And if you format your drive in FAT32 format, uh, then you can run PS1 and PSP games off it, but not PS2 games because if you know a lot of PS2 games are larger than 4 gigs, so they won't fit on a FAT32 formatted external hard drive. And for the ones that do fit, it can't actually run the game from the external hard drive. It kind of copies it to uh, the internal hard drive and then runs it from the internal drive. So you might as well just install it to the internal drive in the first place. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend really uh, using an external hard drive for backwards compatible games. So uh, yeah, uh, I would just go with the internal drive for those. So anyway, yeah, that's basically it. That's how you install backwards compatible games onto your jailbroken PS3. Hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful and stay tuned for the next video where we're finally going to go online with the system. We're going to connect to PSN. I'm going to show you uh, how to get uh, connected online and what to do if you get banned and all that kind of stuff is going to be covered uh, in the next episode. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. That was terrific. Yeah, great. Change the channel. Uh, but the man said to stay tuned.